Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, wherever you're at. Welcome to Seoul Human Resource Development Center 2024 New Direction Preview Virtual Session. My name is Grace Wan, your MC for today's virtual session. I'd like to extend my gratitude to all of you who participated in our virtual session. Today's virtual session is a platform for sharing the innovative direction of international training for the year of 2024. Replacing the annual international training policy forum that has been held in previous years. If you have any questions or comments during this today's event, please feel free to write them in the chat room. SHRDC staff will respond in real time. You can write on all your questions on the chat room or send them via email. As you all know, shrdcinfo at gmail.com. Questions and comments are always welcome. Your interest is really, really appreciated. Now let's begin the opening ceremony of the SHRDC 2024 New Direction Preview Virtual Session. First, We'll hear a welcome remarks from Mr. Lee Hui Sung, the president of the Seoul Human Resource Development Center. Good morning and good afternoon. I'm Hui Sung Lee, president of the Seoul Human Resources Development Center. Thank you for joining the session today, despite your busy schedule. We plan to expand cross-section policy learning content from 2024 according to the SHRDC Education and Training Innovation Plan. So today, in this session, we will introduce the new direction of our international training program. We will also introduce you our new integrated policy package training. Since 2008, our center has been conducting training programs for foreign city officials. Over the past 15 years, we have run 184 international training programs for 2,922 participants from 304 foreign cities in 75 countries, both online and offline. Especially, many participants of our international training gave us positive feedback that they learned valuable lessons. They said our training helped them to solve urban issues in their cities by sharing Seoul's urban policies, and it enhanced the capability of 
their public officials. Thank you for your continued support and interest. The COVID-19 accelerates inequality and polarization in the city. Many global cities prioritize the solution for this problem for sustainability and future competitiveness. Also, to tackle the increasing climate crisis issues, a new and comprehensive approach is needed. Because the issues involve volatility, uncertainty, and complexity. So we must have a cross-sectoral comprehensive solution for this. While SHRDC training programs have achieved growth in numbers thanks to your support. But we need to develop the new approach. We have learned that we need the integration among policy sectors because the current sectoral approach by policy areas is not sufficient in sharing comprehensive and practical experience for urban solutions. Furthermore, polarization and inequality issues, which are the central issues in urban problems, require a comprehensive cross-sectoral approach too. So, in this sense, we lack an agile response in presenting comprehensive cross-sectoral solutions to address urban problems. For this reason, in 2024, we plan to expand the going together with the social neglect policy integrated package international training. The core policy of Seoul, going together with the social neglected, serves as a solution to the global urban problems of inequality and polarization, and it was well received during our pilot pro program. We look forward to your continued interest and participation. On the other hand, as the headquarters of Metropolis International Training Institute, MITI, we have expanded our horizons in Seoul's urban diplomacy. We have established new partnerships with various international organizations too. In 2024, we aim to broaden the opportunity to share Seoul's urban development experience and policy by growing the old SHRDC forum into the Seoul Policy Sharing Global Forum. The SHRDC international training programs will strive continuously to provide innovative and sustainable solutions for the current issues and future challenges faced by cities worldwide. We hope that many of you who are present here uh, will join us in supporting the efforts of SHRDC and MITI. We look forward to your generous collaboration. Thank you. Now I will briefly explain today's agenda. The event will consist of part one, a special keynote speech, and part two, an introduction to the new direction of the International Training Program by SHRDC. Part one's keynote speech will be delivered by Mayor Oh Se-fun, who will speak on Seoul's core policy of going together with the socially neglected. This lecture is a pre-recorded video edited from a lecture Mayor, Mayor Oh gave at Yale University, a prestigious university in the United States in September. The key initiatives of going together with the socially neglected include a representative program such as Soul Learn, which provides a fair opportunity and safety income, which eliminates blind spots in the existing welfare system. Now, let's meet Mayor Oh Se-hun through the video. We are looking at the current vision of Seoul, but today I'm here to tell you how and what we do to help the needy in Seoul. 
Do you know Korea is very famous for the speedy industrialization and democratization? This picture shows us some symbolic aspect of every advanced country, including Korea, the serious gap between the rich and the poor. The problem is the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Even more, the discrepancy becomes bigger and bigger day by day. Frankly speaking, the fact that I was selected as champion mayor for inclusive growth by OECD recently gave me such a rewarding feeling. But at the same time, I was also surprised to find out that OECD knew exactly what I was doing. As a matter of fact, there are so many policies for the needy people, but today, I'd like to explain a few major policies for the socially neglected. This is the first solution for the polarization issue. Don't you think the start line should be fair? Everyone in this room knows the, the importance of education. In Korea, however, students need to get extra help from the private sector, so-called crammers, in Korean, hak won to go to better college. This is the main culprit of the big discrepancy between the poor and the rich. So it hit me, how can I help those poor students? This brought me to the, the academic assistance program called Seoul Lan. This assistance program provides the needy students with famous instructors online lectures, studying materials for, the free, of, for free of charge along with collegian mentors. So we are trying to increase the number of participants for the program next year. We've done it a little over a year now and it has produced fantastic results. A total of 461 participants entered universities through this program this year. I strongly believe that if I can change even one life through this program, that money is worth every penny and I will not spare any money for doing it. This clip shows the effect of Seoul. 서울시는 뭐 제가 장담하건데 반드시 프로그램을 더 확대하고 지원을 더 늘려갈 생각입니다. 공부를 하면서 아이가 성적만 올리는 게 아니라 이제 공부가 자신감이 생기니까 아이가 달라지더라고요. 일상도 달라지고 학교도 달라지고 학교에서 생활하는 것도 달라져서 중학교 2학년이 돼서는 학급 회장 선거를 나가게 되는 거예요. 원래 그런 애가 아니었거든요. 그냥 좋은 <웃음> 학교 다니는 그런 아이인데 갑자기 이제 학급 부회장이 돼서 굉장히 큰 변화라고 제가 생각하고 있어요. 그리고 이제 공부에 재미가 생기니까 좋아하게 되고 열심히 하다 보니까 더 공부하고 싶은 게 생기고 하니까 이제 서울과학고 영재교육원 자기 가고 싶다고 지원을 해서 그때 수영도 보고 해서 합격해서 다니고 있어요. How do you feel about the clip? It's such a rewarding experience to me. And I know there is someone like this in this room. Here comes the real deal for the socially neglected. It will change all the current welfare system forever. If this safety income system becomes successful, all the current welfare system you know might be antiquated. In the current welfare system for the poor, even if you have opportunities to work more and earn more, you hesitate or you can't work because the minute you work more than the government's set limit, you will lose all the right to be aided. So in the current system, people will not want to work more and make more money. They would rather stay in the cycle of being poor and not work anymore. But in the new welfare system that I am ex experimenting now, people in the poor boundary will want to work more and earn more. This is the comparison picture between the current welfare system and safety income system. Once they are selected as help needed people, we will monitor how much they make every month and supplement them with the money they need if they don't make enough money. And we will stop giving them extra help if they make enough money to live. But even though they are not provided with extra money because they worked harder, their status of getting help doesn't change until they actually graduate from it. This kind of experiment is very common in many countries, many cities, including Seoul. This is the outcome of the past one year of the new system. 
There is a picture of professionals commenting on our experiment. Now, let's talk about the medical care system. At this point in time, I think I need to say something about Korea's healthcare system. I can dare to say that our system is far better than yours. <laughs> Please don't kill me for this. <laughs> In our current healthcare system, the richer pay more and the poorer pay less. But the poorer get far more medical benefit from hospitals and doctor's offices. Even with all this benefit, as mayor of Seoul, I am trying to build more city hospitals for the people who are in need of help. This policy gives me another pride. Nowadays, people do not starve to death because our government is taking such good care of them in terms of food. In my opinion, at this point in time, we need to do something about their will to survive on their own, because it's far more important than the food. I've tried to give those homeless people the opportunity to take some liberal arts-related courses at colleges. Upon finishing the program, they will be treated the same way as ordinary college graduates. The same graduation suit and the cap and everything else. Believe it or not, about 70% of participants in the program survived the courses and left the colleges with ever higher self-esteem. Yeah, now let's take our attention to the world. You know, we had a horrible conflict with North Korea about 70 years ago. If we hadn't received help from the UN, I wouldn't be standing here and talking to you like this now. We can't forget the very much needed, enormous help from other countries at that time. And we are the only country in the world that had help from the world before and is giving the help back to the world now. This aid money we gave wasn't much in the beginning, as you can see. But as of this year, we are increasing the amount of aid money dramatically. And also, at the same time, we are sending out more volunteers to the world. You know, I'm one of the, those believers that it's far better to help the needy by teaching them how to fish and not just giving them a fish itself. What a coincidence. The initials for knowledge sharing program are the same as Korea sharing program. I hope this tra transformation of Korea can give inspiration and courage to many less developed countries. This is what we are doing to help underdeveloped countries become more self-sufficient by growing rice more productively. This is possible because Korea could develop easier rice to breed to survive in destitute African countries like Rwanda. We are making every effort to solve the starvation issues in Africa by developing new rice breed, and it has been very successful so far. I, myself, stayed in Rwanda for six months in 2014. At the time, I helped the city government of Kigali with the, with the issues such as industrialization and welfare systems. While I was there, I was able to witness a highly successful case of growing rice more effectively in the remote village of Mushimba. In the new village movement, so-called Semaul movement in Korea, about five volunteers worked together as a group for a few years. These volunteers led dramatic changes in the mindset of the villagers. They took the initiative and set examples for the villagers. The locals slowly but surely learned how to grow rice. And finally, they realized the true meaning of diligence, self-aid, and cooperation. These three principles, diligence, self-aid, and cooperation, are the spirits of the Semaul movement that were the fundamentals of Korean development. On the other hand, this is sharing knowledge and experience of Seoul. We are sharing our knowledge and experience with 61 cities in 35 countries. These are various examples of sharing our best practices around the world. According to the news, quite a few cities, including the city of New York, is benchmarking our way of processing food waste. 
which is being turned into fertilizers, animal feeds, and sources of energy. In Seoul, you can pay for one low price of public transportation and you can take the subway or buses as many times as you want. Actually, two weeks ago, I announced a new policy of unlimited use of various transportation systems, including buses, subways, and bicycles, and in one year, Ribobus, for only $50 a month by benchmarking Germany. Its name is Climate Companion Car. As you all know, Seoul is a world-famous smart city with stronger infrastructure ever now. There's no question about that. And last year, we launched the Seoul Smart City Prize. So far, 240 cities, corporations, and organizations around the world have applied for the prize. And shortly after I return to Seoul, the World Cities Summit Mayor's Forum will be held to award the prize. In this um, special keynote, Mayor Oh Se-hoon prioritized going together with the socially neglected and shared his experiences in addressing city issues and prioritizing these initiatives in the administration. Going together with the socially neglected repre represents Mayor Oh Se-hoon's core administrative values, reflecting Seoul's efforts to ensure that vulnerable groups are not excluded from their opportunity due to economic, fiscal, or other reasons. Now, in accordance with the Seoul Human Resource Development Center's innovative training policy, I will share with you the direction of the SHRDC's international training, which will be reorganized from 2024, and the expanded policy integrated package training content. Over the years, the international training programs of SHRDC have experienced quantitative growth thanks to the encouragement and support from many of you. Over the past 15 years, we have conducted 184 international training sessions, both online and offline, targeting 2,922 individuals from 304 foreign cities in 75 countries. However, in terms of quality, the operation of fragmented training programs in various policy areas has been insufficient in integrating and sharing substantial urban problem-solving experiences and policies. The accelerated inequalities and polarization experienced during the COVID-19 pandemic and the recent climate crisis have emerged as global urban issues. To address urban problems characterized by increasing volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, a comprehensive and new approach is necessary. There is a growing demand for an integrated approach to climate, transportation, and housing. But, Due to the operation of fragmented training programs in each field, the sharing of substantial urban problem-solving experiences and policies has been insufficient. Against this backdrop, SHRDC has developed a training curriculum that focuses on policies aimed at resolving the global urban issues of polarization and equality rather than fragmented training in specific thematic areas, such as urban transportation and climate or environment. 
we have developed a comprehensive training program with the theme going together with the socially neglected, which has received positive evaluations. In the new year of 2024, SHRDC plans to extend, ex expand and implement policy integrated training and content development based on Seoul's representative policy of going together with the socially neglected. Meanwhile, with the launch of the Seoul Development Cooperation Promotion Team, the ODA projects have been reorganized as one of Seoul's urban diplomacy strategies. Consequently, we are planning to newly organize and implement ODA-linked training programs that can provide substantial assistance to developing countries in 2024. In July 2023, the SHRDC conducted a pilot program called Going Together with the Socially Neglected Caring City, bringing together diverse cases from Seoul and Bogota, not limited to a single field. These program cases were presented as solutions to global inequality and polarization, receiving positive feedback from participants. Therefore, in the first half of 2024, we plan to expand policy integrated online training by conducting five online training sessions. Furthermore, targeting outstanding participants from online training, we plan to conduct three offline training sessions in the second half of 2024. Now, the overall landscape of our educational field has become accustomed to hybrid education, seamlessly combining both online and offline components. According to a survey on international training demand, for training cities, more than 80% express a preference for a hybrid online and offline training approach. Therefore, from now on, it will be operated in a dual track system. Online training will provide more educational opportunities to foreign city officials. And offline training will be selected based on the excellence of online training participants we aim to operate a more systematic and advanced training program through a qualita qualitatively deepened process. In particular, for offline training, we intend to integrate with international events such as the Seoul Policy Sharing Global Forum, providing an opportunity for participating cities to engage in broader policy exchanges and capacity building. According to Metropolis, the concentration of population in large cities is accelerating, with an estimated 2.6 billion people expected to live in major cities worldwide by 2030. The SHRDC International Training continuously strive to offer innovative and sustainable solutions to current challenges and the future issues faced by cities around the world. With this, I will conclude the explanation of the new direction of the 2024 SHRDC International Training Program Restructuring. For those who could not join us today due to time differences, the video will be available for viewing on the virtual Seoul platform until December 9th in Seoul time. After that, you can watch this webinar on the SHRDC YouTube channel. We express our deep gratitude to everyone who joined us today. If you have any inquiries regarding the 2024 training operations, please feel free to contact us at shrdc info at gmail.com.